Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on another beautiful Sunday. Pray that you are all doing well and are safe and healthy. Um, before we get, we, before we dive into some worship time, I just had some announcements for you guys. Make sure to keep an eye out for the newsletter. Uh, we have last week we had sent it out saying what positions uh, we still needed the volunteers for to be able to open up at the on lawn um, for Sunday mornings, but yeah. we still have some that need to be filled. So. Make sure you're checking the newsletter so you can get updates on what is still open that you can um, volunteer with a joyful heart with <laughs> as we are prepping to start meeting um, on the lawn. That's one. Two is um, the Bible study is on Thursday nights at 6. 5 to 6. Uh, from 5 to 6 p.m. So make sure you um, email us to get the information, the Zoom link for that. That's Thursdays. And then... Um, Finally, if you are going to be giving, go to, to lighthouse805.com. You can go to our giving page and give there. And so uh, we just thank you for um, remaining faithful, yeah. not, not just because of the monetary value, but because of your heart towards the Lord, your heart of obedience. Like we just, we thank you for that. Um, so now let's get ready for some worship together. Yeah. 
have all I have just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you. Forever the hope in my heart. Okay, boys, time for church. Good morning. Good morning, church family. Good morning, hi. church family. Say hi. Good morning. Hi. Me and the granddog are ready, ready for church time. Good morning, church. It's time to worship. Got my coffee. Good morning, Good morning Lighthouse. Mm, needs more sugar. Good morning, Lighthouse family. I got my coffee brewed, ready to worship and hear the word. Good, Good morning, morning, church. Ready for Good worship. worship. Are you guys ready for worship? Are you ready to praise the Lord? <gasps> Hi, church. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Happy Sunday. Sunday. Best and wishes I hope from Oxnard. You have a good Sunday, church. Hmm? Bye. Ready for worship. Good morning, Lighthouse. I've got my coffee. Let's go to church. Ready, Ready for, for worship. worship. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. Hi. Hi. Good morning, church. We miss you. We are ready to worship. Hey church, you ready to do life together online? Sitting on a swing in I think fourth grade, going back and forth, back and forth. All the other kids in grade school were gone and there was one car left in the parking lot, my principal. And I remember thinking, I wonder if I'm going home tonight or if I'm just gonna stay the night in my playground for the next day of school. I remember contemplating this, swinging back and forth, back and forth, and later in life, I realized there's nothing worse than trying to rely on someone that might not show up. You know, it can, it can make you frustrated. It can just make you sit around for far too long. It can, I don't know, it's, there's nothing worse than that, right? Have you ever had to rely on someone that just doesn't show up, doesn't come through, doesn't do what they say? Like reliability is huge. And, and that's what I wanna bring out today in, in reliable faith, is Jesus is reliable, right? We don't have to be like the little kid on the playground. And I remember I exhausted so many things that day, just trying to keep busy, not be bored, what, you, everything. What would it see? <laughs> it was, we had like little rocks in Oregon, so the water would drain out when it rained. And so I made like little fake sand castles out of the rocks. I mean, it was just, you know, relying on people, they'll let you down. But in today's message, we're, we're gonna really focus on what it means to be, have a faith on a reliable God. And sometimes believers and Christians can actually put their faith in other things. And, and they sometimes they don't even know that they're placing their faith in other things. They just do it and then they get so disappointed or hurt. Yeah. And that's where, I don't know, that's, it, it can be, just become a negative experience. And so we're staying in Jeremiah chapter one for, for quite, for a few weeks now, actually. And as you're opening up there, we've spent the last several weeks on Jeremiah's calling, right? This is the moment where Jeremiah has built up his faith. And now God is calling him to take action on his faith. We're in the sermon series, Faith Check right now, where we are testing and checking our own faith. Is it structurally sound? Do we have the foundation of Jesus going on? Or do we simply just have salvation? See, this whole sermon series is taking the salvation foundation that we have and growing and expanding it and, and building our faith up so that we can live our life to the full potential that we can as, as believers in Jesus. And I, I love this idea of reliable faith. So in Jeremiah chapter one, verse 11, this is where we're gonna start out today. And then we're gonna to jump to a few places uh, in the word of God. Verse 11 says this, then the Lord said to me, look, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I replied, I see a branch from an almond tree. And the Lord said, that's right. It means, and it means that I am watching and I will certainly carry out all my plans. Now, contextually speaking, this is God talking to Jeremiah 
and calling him and saying, you're gonna be my prophet, you're gonna go to the nations, you're gonna proclaim anyone who still worships idols gonna be destroyed, that, that my chosen people go into exile. It's a lot of bad news. And God's saying, whatever I say, I'm gonna watch over it and make sure what I say comes true. And as that can sound kind of negative, uh, a little bit, the, the, this is actually a promise. This is God saying, whatever I say, I'm watching over that it comes true. And on this side of Jesus raising from the dead, this side of grace, that's a powerful promise. I am watching over my word and it will come true. And, and this, there's some symbolism here and this play on words that are happening. It references this almond tree. It says, what do you see? And he says, I see an almond tree. And there's something that's happening here. Let me, let me read, out, read this excerpt. There is a play on sounds here in the Hebrew text. The word translated almond, sheked, has the same root as the word hasten, shoked. And so this, this idea is as early blossoming almond trees gave promise to later spring fruit. See, almond trees they actually bloom in January. And then those blooms, those flowers, oversee and, and symbolically represent that more fruit is on the way. And God's saying, just like how the first thing that opens is the almond tree, it's the first, it's me. I am the first one here and I am watching. I am fully present seeing the orchard and crops bloom. And God's saying symbolically, I am watching over what I say and it will come true. Just like the almond tree is first to arrive, I'm first with my word. And I love that promise of God is first in our lives and he already has this word over us, these promises over us. And it's awesome. He's saying, not only am I, have I showed up before you, but I am overseeing that the word over your life will come true. Those promises will come true. And that's so encouraging. Mm -hmm. And I love looking at these, these older texts that are on that side of the cross, right? Where they don't understand who Jesus is and, and raising from the dead and, and all the salvation and grace and, and mercy that it comes with it. But we get to look at all of the Old Testament and realize that it's actually a filter through what was prophetically Jesus and these promises that are there. God will always carry out his plans. God is always reliable. Today's message, it, it's simple. It's, it really is just reliable faith. Our faith is reliable because we have a reliable God who shows up first and then watches it come true. And I just, I like that concept. You know, I don't have to put my, my faith on an unreliable source. Mm -hmm. and, and in the, the context and, and uh, in the Bible studies on Thursday, you you learn about all the other people going on and, and the, the different fake prophets and the different people that are leading others astray, you know, they're, they're unreliable sources. And so today, I want to look at some differences between unreliable faith and reliable faith. And, I, I, and it's really uh, checks and measures to help us kind of fine tune where our faith is. This whole sermon series is faith check. And so in order to check our faith, we need to make sure that we are fully have all of our faith on a reliable source and not an unreliable source. So we find out in Jeremiah that one of the big uh, issues that God has is people have placed their faith in idols. And we've dedicated a lot of time talking about what this means, right? To them, Idols were these symbols and these fake gods, and, and they would put their trust. They would do stuff for, for, uh, for example, like hay. They would have a hay god, and they would pray. They had Baal, and they would pray to Baal and say, please let my crops grow. Please let the sun, you know, whatever they're doing. And they're putting their faith in this unreliable imaginary source. And I know in the 21st century, it's easy to say, <laughs> I am so good. I'm glad I have not made the mistake of carving an idol and putting it up and praying mm -hmm. to that. And I, I beg to differ. 21st century looks a little bit different, right? It's, it's anything that 
what we put our hopes in, right? That's the sad part is 21st century, the way that looks is, um, it's actually easier than what it used to be, I guess, to, we put our hopes in everyday things in our lives and we mm -hmm. don't even realize that we do until it's it's gotten to a hopeless point i guess yeah i'd say back then idolatry was more blatant yeah yeah and then in the 21st century Very clear uh -huh. it's it's more sneaky and mm -hmm. conniving and it's it's easy to fall in that trap Right, because the enemy knew that if it was the same thing today, you know, methods have to change in order yeah. to snare, seal, kill, and destroy our faith and our our lives. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah. And so these people are placing their faith on unreliable sources. So what's what's some idolatry that we could, you know, do away with? It's it's putting our trust that our our boss is going to see us and give us a raise and finally get that one paycheck so we can finally do this. That's, that's placing our faith in someone or a paycheck or a thing or a job or anything else, right? It's, it's trying to have fulfillment internally. You know, a lot of people drown out their frustrations in front of TV and try to feel fulfilled in a TV show. And try to try to feel better about their lives by escaping into those other areas. And reality, we're supposed to cast our cares and our anxieties and our fears onto the Lord. Yes. And so there's different forms of idolatry that tries to sneak into everyone's lives. And that's where destruction comes from, if you will. Yeah. And so unreliable faith. Also, not only is it idolatry, but unreliable faith is actions without relationship. They're actions without relationship to Jesus. And lastly, it's, it's also relationship without actions. So I know that's kind of confusing to understand because I just threw that out there. But let's go over to uh, Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 flip into the New Testament. Hope you're there. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. This is uh, Jesus uh, preaching on this topic. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name, we cast out demons in your name, and we perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. That's terrifying. That's like really scary. That is, that's, that's New Testament. This is Jesus talking and he knows, he knows what's about to happen. He knows that he's going to die on the cross. He's going to raise again and that we get grace for free. And then he says, you're going to think you're saved. You're going to walk up to heaven because you did the actions, mm -hmm. right? You showed up, you, you prayed for healing in someone's life and they were healed and you're going to get there and you're going to walk up to the gate with all confidence and you're going to say, all right, let me in. And, and Jesus says, I will reply. Jesus We'll talk to people and say, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Like, mind-blowing. What? I will re reply, I never knew you. That's, that's the key word here. See, actions without relationship are an unreliable faith. See, if your faith is based on doing actions of service, void of relationship with Jesus, you're, you're in trouble. I, I feel convicted as your pastor, as, 
as I don't know if you call me pastor or if you're just tuning in and you just happen to catch this one moment on the, the podcast or the video, wherever you're watching from, I feel convicted that, that you don't grasp this. An unreliable faith is doing actions that are good without having relationship with Jesus. That's a scary place to be. Like, you know what, if you're, if you're, if you feel like you're only doing good when you're volunteering and you feel like if you're not volunteering for volunteering, you just feel down in the dumps and you feel like whatever, I, I plead work on your relationship with Jesus because volunteering is, is just the cherry on top. You know, it's, it's the deep down moments you have in a relationship it's, it's everything. And then Jesus goes on further. Uh, this is out of the synoptic gospels. We, we talk about this verse being in Luke chapter six, and we talked about this four or five weeks ago on what the foundation of Jesus is, right? So after we have salvation, we work on our foundation and this Jesus talks about it. Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey, it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. See, the first part of this story, right, where Jesus is talking about, you know, someone coming to the gates of heaven. He's like, I don't, I don't know who you are. That's unreliable faith because that person hasn't discovered salvation. They've discovered just volunteerism and feeling good about it. The second part addresses foundation. See, out of relationship, we have this deep desire to have the foundation of Jesus and we're taking actions on the word. So it doesn't say that you're not, you're not going to heaven on the second part. It says that you're foolish because you gain the inheritance of heaven, but you waste the life on earth. Wow. See, the first one deals with your salvation and the second one deals with foundation. And, and I, I want to be clear, um, if, if you question the fact that you are saved right now, and I would love to talk with you, my wife would love to talk to you, drop us a line, send a message, email info at lighthouse805.com, you know, send a private message, a direct message, whatever you're watching on. And, and we love to pray with you, talk with you and make sure that you are, you know, that you are the full accepted grace of Jesus. But if all you have is grace, it's time to step up and gain a foundation in Jesus. I know we, we have a very similar repeating topic in the last few weeks, but it's, it's been weighing on my heart. Because we, the next season of our church, it's it's huge, and I want to make sure that we're all able to carry the mantle that that God is throwing, the Holy Spirit is placing in our church, the mantle of His vision to move forward. And and we can't unless you make sure that you got your salvation in, and you make sure you got your foundation in. We're going to be doing some really cool things in our church soon in regards to foundation. I'm so excited about it. I can't announce it yet because I always get way too ahead. I shouldn't even have said anything. It's a, okay. Listen, we're going to do stuff. It's going to be awesome, but I need you to make sure salvation of foundation. And, and you might be saying, wait, okay. Uh, you can't just drop a bomb of Jesus saying, I don't know you. I, I, I'm really trying to set up the second half of the sermon here. Because the first half is all about unreliable faith. But the next half is about reliable faith. 
What does that mean? How do we start this relationship with Jesus? How do we start this progression forward? How do we move from where we're at to where we're supposed to be going? Where's our track, if you will? Well, let's jump to Jeremiah 29. Half of y'all just said 11 in your mind. Jeremiah 29, 10. Let's go there. Jeremiah 29, 10. You can't have Jeremiah 29, 11 until you get Jeremiah 29, 10. Jeremiah 29, 10. This is what the Lord says. Let me pause right there. It just started and I want, I want to take a moment. I want you to get your Bible and your pen, okay? If you don't have it, find it, get it. If you don't have one, message us, we'll get you one, okay? Free, we'll just, we'll make sure you have a Bible. Get your pen, get your Bible. If you're doing it on your phone, highlight it. Here's, here's what I want you to do. I want you to underline or circle every single time that you see you or your, okay? One of those words. Uh, we're gonna read from chap- Jeremiah 29, chapter, or chapter 29, verse 10 through 14, and every single time you see you or your, circle it, okay? Because we're, go- we're gonna dive into reliable faith right now. This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised. And I will bring you home again, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own land. How many, t- how many circles we got in here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I got 15. You got six, 16. 16. So depending on translation, you're somewhere in there. That's a lot of times. One thing we learned at Bible college is if the Holy Spirit inspired this word, right? This is the living word of God. If a word is repeated two or three times in a section, it's critically important. This is far more than two or three. God is really trying to drive something home here. Mm-hmm. Reliable faith starts with you. Do not ever think for a moment that your faith, your entrance ticket to heaven, your what, whatever you think your faith is, is based on your grandma praying a lot, is based on your spouse is, is really in the word. Your faith is on your shoulders. You are accountable to it. It's it's not anyone else. At the gates of heaven, when Jesus is standing there, remember what we read? Unreliable faith. I don't know you. See, this scripture talks about reliable faith. He mentions you or your. He's talking directly to you. It's all about you. And and the the context of the scripture, this is how God writes the Bible is just, it is so, he's a genius, right? He's smarter than any, any of us. Like the audacity that God spoke to Jeremiah, wrote these words that, that, His chosen people, so just track with me for a moment. His chosen people were going to be exiled from their home, right? For a lifetime. And then at the end of their lifetime would come back to their home, right? Look at at this. 
I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own land. God is not only talking about this as a history of just saying this is his chosen people. They were exiled for a lifetime. He's he's boldly putting this in here as the promise of us, this side of grace, saying, I have exiled you to, you are on the earth for your life. And my promise to you is I'm bringing you back home, heaven. I I love this. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you. Right, Think, think about that. Think about that verse on this side of the cross. God has, I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you. I will gather you out of the earth where I sent you. I will bring you home again to your own land. See, I think an unreliable faith moment is when we think that earth is the, our home. Mm -hmm. That's, this is crazy. Like, does it not just like blow your mind? It just, it wows me. It's like, this is so cool to read. When God was not only talking to Jeremiah about his chosen people being exiled for Jerusalem, God was talking about all of humanity forever saying, there's a parallel here. There's a connection. As they were exiled from their home, and I'm going to bring them back because of my promise. Mm -hmm. Humanity is on the earth and their home is heaven, and I'm going to bring them back. But there's a whole lot of other words that happen before the resolution of his promise of, of us being in heaven with him. And I, I love this. See, in, the, in this area, Babylon represents earth and home is heaven. One, one thing that I, I want to kind of sidetrack for just a moment before we bring it home in, into this area is when your mind focus focuses on the future and hope that is Jesus in heaven, nothing else compares. Right? I, I, I gave that illustration uh, maybe a couple weeks ago about if you're going through something hard, put yourself 1,000 years from now in heaven and whatever you're going through, just it just becomes so small and, and insignificant where you can gain that hope that is Jesus, right? And he'll he'll take you through that moment. See, it's it's understanding our promises of where our future is. And th- that's what deals with our frustrations, our situations, our health. Even on the flip side of our insecurity, insecurities of God calling us to tell our friends about Jesus or calling us to pray for our friends for healing, right? It, it, it covers this myriad of nervousness or scariness of things that we're going to go through. Let's, let's look at the scripture. Reliable faith is. See, when it says it, in those days, verse 12, rely, this is reliable faith. In those days, When you pray, I will listen. I think, I don't know if every Christian goes through this. Maybe it was just me when I first started. But I remember telling uh, my youth pastor, he's like, oh, you should be praying for that. And I'm like, well, I don't know how to pray. He's like, you just have a conversation. You're talking to me right now. Do the same thing with that guy. I was like, oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. You know, it's, it's youth pastor logic. <laughs> One of the, the things that we need to have a reliable faith and a relationship with Jesus is to start praying. It sounds like such a basic concept. But don't allow you to think, yourself to think, well, I just don't know how to pray or I don't know if he listens or I, I don't know if that's like, what is prayer? This is, this is what his promise says. In those days. See, on this side of the covenant, in those days, those days actually represent days when we're on the earth and God is in heaven. In those days when you pray, I will listen. That's a promise from God. 
while you're on the planet Earth, if you pray, he will listen. I mean, that's... It doesn't get simpler than that. That's what it is. Verse 13. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. So the first one is, if you, if you pray, he'll listen. The second one, reliable faith. If you look for me wholeheartedly. I, I think too many people fall into the trap of tomorrow, next week, next year. You know, I'll, when I'm feeling better about life or when I get better on my feet or when things turn around, you know, that's, that's the time that I'm going to get more into this religious thing. Man, it's today. Do you find me wholeheartedly? The, the thing that strikes me on this is if you look for me wholeheartedly, God constantly looks at our relationship and uses the word heart, right? David had a heart after, you know, wholeheartedly. It, he, he looks at the heart. The, the interesting thing, and I've said this uh, maybe a couple years ago, I preached a message on the heart. But the heart is the only organ that in your body that can't be cut in half and you still keep on living. Mm -hmm. Do you know, you know your lungs? If you remove one lung, you can still live. Your brain, did you, do you know, you can actually remove half your brain and keep living. You can remove one kidney, half your kidneys and keep living. You can, half your arms, one arm, you can keep living. Your eye, one, one eye, you can, your heart. It is the only organ that it's all or nothing. It is either all working or not working. Right? It is the only one that it's everything or nothing at all. And, and God uses the heart to illustrate our relationship with him. He's, he's saying, I don't want your seconds. I don't want your thirds. I don't want half your mind. I don't want half of this. I'm not a shared kind of God. Well, if you think about it, none of us like to have anybody else's leftovers. You know, you don't want your spouse's leftovers of energy when they come home from work. You don't want your children's, you want all their attention, not just a little bit, you know, and in any relationship that we have, you don't want the leftovers. You don't want the little bits. You want the whole thing. So if we want that, why wouldn't the Lord want that of us? You know, and, and yeah. my goodness, to have the audacity to give God our leftovers. Sheesh. <laughs> I know. I mean, even thinking about like just leftovers, because I'm like hungry now, I guess. But like tri-tip, right? If you If you grill it, there's nothing better than when it first comes off. You know, let it rest first in case you didn't know that, like 15, 20 minutes. But then after that, so good. It's still decent and good when you reheat it, but it's not as good as when it first comes off. Like, our God, it's it's the first. It's he wants wholeheartedly. It's That's where reliable faith comes from. You know, something that the, the Holy Spirit was just speaking to my heart right now, um, A good way to check your faith is to see if, do you look forward to Sundays or even to reopening the church? Because that's the only time you feel close to God, or if that's the only time that mm. you feel good, you know, because you're, you're having an inpouring of the Lord, you're having a Lord dose <laughs> in that day. Um, it's a good way to check your faith. Because what's going on in the in-between time, what's going on in this, in the last, what, six months, this in-between time of being in a church building or, or being, are, are you being in your word Monday through Saturday? You know, it's a good way to check your faith. And this isn't like a, I'm not saying this to condemn anybody, um, because there, there is a reason why we gather together and we fellowship 
mm-hmm. with each other. There is absolutely a place for that. But when you're relying on that to be your soul filling mm. of that God shape hole in your heart, it's not going to fill it. it you, you've got to give the Lord the whole, the whole thing. You got to give the Lord your whole attention, your whole heart every day. And I'm not saying, you know, sit with your Bible every single minute of the day. No, it's be intentional about the time that you are giving the Lord every day, every day, whether you have five minutes to pray in the morning, but if you're doing it wholeheartedly, God, he promises, you will seek me and you will find me. Put that stress in those words. Do I think my youth pastor is either him or his wife, either Yol or Christy, Bartholomew, love them, um, <laughs> uh, taught us how to stress, if you stress the word in the sentence. So, you know, if you seek me, you will find me. Or if you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me, you know, it's a, you, you get it. Just go through it. And it, it's just so powerful to... Mm-hmm. really soak in God's word like that. But, um, sorry. Anyway, that, that was just the Holy spirit, blame the Holy spirit for that interruption. But <laughs> <laughs> just really be intentional about your time with the Lord in the in between days and the Monday through Saturday and the time that we aren't still physically in a building, you know, just be intentional with the Lord. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it's it's all about wholeheartedly. It's it's for for me wholeheartedly. You will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. And I don't want you to read that verse thinking, "Oh man, if I worship God and I read my Bible and I pray, there are fortunes to be had right now." No, it, it's talking about the, the inheritance and the fortune that it is in heaven. Okay? God does bless us here on earth. Don't get me wrong. There, God mm-hmm. places favor on his children. Yes. But the, the scripture's really leaning in towards everything that comes with the salvation that is mm-hmm. from Jesus. Mm-hmm. So, what I want to do is I want to talk about what you were talking about with the Holy Spirit. And and I want to talk about coronavirus times. Okay. Can we do a faith check right now? Just with coronavirus. Okay. When you were home, what did you hyper-focus on? Where was your time spent? Mm -hmm. The crazy thing is like, we should have had more time on our hands than ever before. (laughs) So what do we do? Mm-hmm. You know, and there's there's all the myriad of things going on. A lot of people spend all of their time on social media, like hours per day, mm-hmm. right? Some people hyper-focused on conspiracy theories, right? Some people started weighing really heavily into the political environment. Like all this extra time leads to certain things. Or even dwell, spent time dwelling on what used to be. Like everything that was lost. It's like, I I need this. I need the consistency. I need these things. And and we can spend our time. Where where is your time spent? And and I want to say what what the enemy meant for harm and destruction and tragedy and heartache and all the things that happened during coronavirus times, if you will. I want to say it's the Lord gave us a blessing in the sense that he gave us alone time with him, Mm -hmm. a reconnection, extra time on our hands to pray, to fast, to worship, to seek Mm -hmm. him. How, how are you doing with that? How has your time with the Lord been? Like I I challenge you, it's not too late. It's not too late to say, uh, shoot. I wasted a lot of time. <laughs> it's not too late to say, God, I'm going to give you more time today. Mm-hmm. And I want, I want to challenge you. You know, none of us know how long coronavirus stuff is going to last. I mean, it could end tomorrow by the miraculous healing grace of, of healing of the yes. Lord. You know, it yes. could just be gone. What, you know, God could do anything. Yes. 
but it doesn't mean that you hold out for that moment. Yeah. Utilize what God has given you. Make the enemy regret for a second allowing this to run rampant in our in our country, in our world. Use what God has given you as a gift. Yes. Dig deep in having your foundation of Jesus. Seriously, take it, take a faith check. Man. I think it's a good yeah. time to, sorry, to um, check those idols. Yeah. You know, those idols that something, you, you mentioned social media, spending way too much time on social media. And here's the thing. Yes, social media can be an idol, but the real idol might be ourselves through social media. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I think sometimes we put ourselves in the spotlight mm. um, and wait for the attention that we're going to get. Uh, and that's a slippery slope right there. You know, and so just check that. Have you put yourself in that position um, for whatever reason, you know, and, and just really check other areas but I think the Lord has really put social media really heavy on my heart today um, of just checking yourself of why you're on it why you're using it why you're sharing certain things and I'm not saying it's bad I use it <laughs> um, but what are your reasons behind it so make sure you're checking up on that too sorry the Holy Spirit's just like yeah one know. one of the things that I felt for this message in uh, the word that's been on my mind for several weeks now is, is the sense of urgency mm -hmm. um, and conveying that through the foundation of Jesus and salvation and, and his word brings life. This, this word of urgency, not, not for panic. That's not what I'm trying to get here. Yeah. Urgency as in it is something that's been lost mm -hmm. in God's people. Uh, this urgency saying that, man, God could come back at any time. And and remember the disciples when they spread the gospel, there was this urgency. You know, millions of people were saved at the earliest churches because there was this urgency. Yeah. This urgency. Do you have an urgency, a daily urgency to seek after the Lord? And ha we have to have this urgency of building our relationship with Jesus. How is, how is your relationship with Jesus? How, how are you doing with your relationship? Like, I don't know why this just popped in my head, but uh, have you ever gone to like premarital counseling where you sit down and it's you and your future spouse and you have the therapist and you know they're asking questions and then you take tests and then you you know it's like get to know your future spouse and and you work on compatibility and it's like this this premarital counseling moment and it's to make sure that your relationship is strong to last through the test of time how are you doing with your relationship with jesus are you urgently seeking after him to stand the test of time the, the next step that I, uh, this week, the next steps that I really want to convey is making this Sunday, make this Sunday that you build, you start, where you either build your relationship with Jesus, like you don't have it, and, and you realize that you don't want to be the one getting to heaven and God's like, I, I don't know you. So if your next step is knowing Jesus, make it today. Just say Yes. Say, I need to start. Give me direction. Let's go. Or is, is in terms of reliable faith, is it the part where you need to work on growing your faith? Like you just had a faith check and you're like, yeah, I know Jesus. I have my relationship, but I did the discipleship course and I got my, um, my little certificate. certificate, you know, 30 years ago. And I'm pretty good. Are you? You know, don't don't allow your heart to become callous thinking that I have so much pride that I'm good and I know it all. That's a scary place to be. 
So next steps today is do a faith check. Do you need a relationship with Jesus? If so, let's go. Do a, do a faith check. Do you need to continue your foundation with Jesus? So you're saying, I need to have a relational moment where I need to grow and have my foundation expand more than ever has before. Man, strengthen your relationship with Jesus. Either start one or strengthen it. Well, and we're, we're all in you to those positions. Yeah. You know, like no matter where you're at today, the Lord loves you and accepts you as you are. So don't let this also feel like, <laughs> <laughs> no, this is us saying we love you guys so much. We want to make sure we're all striving and working hard at this relationship of, of that urgency. You know, you know, it's like that, that relationship. You just can't get enough of the other person. Um, that's what it should be like with the Lord. That's how we should always be growing. And it should be exciting to, I mean, you know, those moments where you realize something and then you're like, oh, what else can I find out? It's, it's yeah. all of that. It's having that all the time, you know, and spending that time with the Lord and hearing his voice. And, oh, it just makes me so excited thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And to, to finish it off, Jesus is reliable. Yes. But it starts with your reliable faith. So let's pray. Lord, we we love you and we worship you and, and we're just so excited. Lord, I, I pray that it's not a sense of conviction that, oh, I need to do better and I need to get this done and I need to. No, it's it's making sure that we have a faith check yeah. and we have a desire to build that relationship. Lord, you are reliable and we need to, it's, it's our job. It's, it's us reaching out. It's us saying, I, you've, you've been here for me this, since the start of time, but now I'm catching on and I'm catching up and I'm having my relationship. Lord, I pray that there was an, that there's an urgency of kindling that relationship in our lives mm -hmm. for all of us. In your mighty name, amen. Amen.